Hey everybody, welcome back to Canadian DIY. I'm Jesse and today I'm going to show you how to build cabinet drawers. Now we are going to slow this way, 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 way down. I'm going to go over everything in extreme detail. I'm going to show you the simplest method that I know of to build a nice, super sturdy, nicely finished out cabinet drawer. It's pretty easy. Not a whole lot of math or special tools involved at all. Anybody can build these drawers. I'm going to show you a couple tips on how to finish them out really nice. And I'm going to show you how to get all of your spacing correct for your drawer slides, how to mount them, uh, especially if you've got them in an open area space like this where you don't have a face frame and you just got open air in between them. So I'm going to go over it in extreme detail. Check it out. Our first step is obviously figuring out what kind of drawer slide to install. So these are a three quarter opening uh, Euro style drawer slide. They're pretty simple and user friendly to install. They've got a roller on the front and a roller in the back and they make it very easy. Your other option is a full extension drawer slide like these. Now these are a bit more precise and complicated to install because they ride on ball bearings but they are the nicer slide. Alright once you figured out what kind of drawer slides you need now we got to figure out how long you need. So easy way to do that is first thing you got to do is figure out are you going to go with an inlaid door in other words your cabinet door or your false front uh, is it going to be inset into the frame like this or is it going to be a half inch overlay all the way around that will obviously give you an extra three quarters of an inch to play with or not so once you figured out if you're going to go inset or overlay i'm going inset i'm going to grab a total length that i need in my case i've got 16 and a quarter so because I'm going inset, I've obviously got to take three quarters of an inch off for the thickness of my drawer frame that gives me 15 and a half inches. Now, I don't want an entire 15 and a half inch drawer because if I do, when I close it, it's going to be hitting my back panel once that's installed. So I've got to take a little bit of distance off of that. So for my drawer slides, I'm going to go with 14 inch drawer slides, usually in like two inch intervals. So 14 inch is perfectly fine for me. And I went full extension with sock close. And that will let me pull the drawer out all the way. Once the cabinet false front's installed, I can snug it up to there. That's pretty much where my slide is going to sit. Now you can see I've got some room on the back side there. I've got 15 and a half inches overall. I've got a 14 inch drawer slide. So I'm going to make 14 and a half inch drawer. And that'll give me one inch between the back of my drawer and my back panel, which is plenty. All right. Now we got our length figured out. Now we got to figure out our height. So how do you do that? Well, if you're putting a drawer in a single opening like this, it's pretty easy. So I like to basically take, I got a six inch opening here. If I take an inch off of uh, both directions, that gives me a four inch uh, drawer. And that will give me an inch above and an inch below. Gives me plenty of wiggle room, easy to mount things, nice and simple. However, if you're putting multiple drawers in a large opening like this, it can be a little bit trickier. But again, the same rules apply. So we're going to take two inches off of each drawer. Now, in my case, I'm going to put two drawers in here. So that gives me four inches I got to take off. Now, my entire measurement is just over 18 inches. So if I take four inches off of that, obviously I've got 14 inches worth of space to play with my drawers. So I'm going to put a nine inch drawer in here and a five inch drawer. That gives me 14 inches. However, you can make them the exact same size. You can make one even bigger, one even smaller. It's entirely up to you. But that's a quick, easy way to do it. Give yourself an inch above and below per drawer. All right, now we got our length figured out. We've got our height figured out. How do we figure out the width for the front and the back? So, pretty easy. We're gonna take your drawer slide. Now, most consumer grade drawer slides that you're gonna buy are going to be a half inch thick. You've got two drawer slides, so you gotta account for one inch. Read your instructions, but 99% of the time it says take off a half inch per side. So, that's easy. Now, take two scrap pieces of the material that you're gonna make your drawers out of. Now in my case, I'm using three quarter inch birch plywood. Doesn't matter if you're using half inch, three eighths, uh, solid stock wood, doesn't matter. Cut off a couple of scrap pieces. Now what you're gonna do is take two pieces. So these are basically simulating each side of the drawer. We're gonna put them together and just set them on the side itself. We're gonna take our remaining measurement. In this case, I've got 19 and an eighth. Now, because I have to subtract one inch for my drawer slides, that gives me 18 and an eighth. So that will give me the uh, front and back dimensions for my drawer. So for my drawer, that means I have to cut two pieces. So two sides at 14 and a half inches long. And I've got to cut a front and a back at 18 and an eighth inches long. 
and then all we got to do is assemble them. For the bodies of my drawer, I'm going to cut them out of 3 quarter inch birch plywood. Personally, I just like the heft that this gives the drawer opening and closing it, but if you're making a smaller drawer, you may want to step down to something like half inch just to give yourself a bit more room inside the drawer. I'm going to cut all my widths first, and then I'm going to cut them all to final length after that. With them cut to size, I'm going to take the front and the back piece of each drawer and I'm going to drill a couple pocket holes in them. Now you don't need a whole lot of pocket holes because when we go to assemble this, between the screws and the glue, trust me, it'll be plenty strong. With everything cut and all our pocket holes drilled, now we can go on to an optional step. Now this is a finishing step that I like to do. It finishes off the top side of the drawer and that's just adding some iron on edge banding to all the top edges. It just makes it nice and clean. Then go ahead and give the inside and the outside, so the front and the back of each board, a nice sanding with 220 grit sandpaper and if you did the iron on edge banding just go ahead and soften that edge. Now assembly on these guys is pretty straightforward. We're just going to take and add a line of glue to every edge and then I'm going to pocket hole screw this guy together. So I'm going to start with a front or a back piece with our pocket hole screws and I'm going to stand up one of the side pieces to it, making sure it's flush on the top and the sides. You can use clamps if you have them to hold this guy together, but if you don't have them it's okay, you can just do it by hand. I'm going to add both the front and the back pieces to one side before I add the other side and that's just because this way I can just stand my other side piece up and not have to worry about smearing glue around. It just makes for a cleaner install. With the body fully assembled, now all we gotta do is attach the bottom. So I'm gonna grab a total width and a total length measurement, and I'm gonna cut my bottom panel out of a piece of quarter inch plywood. Attaching the drawer bottom is really simple. So I'm gonna run a thin bead of wood glue the entire perimeter. I'm gonna set my plywood down one corner at a time to avoid smearing the glue around. And then I'm gonna line up all of my edges. With that done, I'm gonna tack a corner in with some 5 8 inch brad nails. Now, you don't need a brad nail gun to do this. You can do this with a hammer and nails. The brad nailer just makes it easier. If your drawer box is out of square at all, go ahead and tug and pull it into place to get everything lined and flushed up, and go ahead and finish tacking the rest of the corners. With all the corners flushed up and tacked in, now what we gotta do is nail down the rest of the plywood bottom. And then I basically just like to start in the middle and work my way back to the corners. Keeps everything simple. And there you have a finished drawer. Told you it wasn't that hard. Now, if you can see from the side here, the only exposed plywood edge, if you did the edge banding on top, is now the bottom panel. If that doesn't bother you, don't worry about it. If it does, you can take a sander, sand it back, you can take a block plane, plane it back. I'm going to take a chamfer bit in my router, set to a quarter inch depth, and I'm just going to route that back. It takes it off at a 45 degree angle, so that way when you flip the drawer over, it virtually disappears. Now we have to move on to mounting the drawer. So I'm gonna take my drawer slide and I'm gonna go full extension on it. And there's a small little tab there you can see. If you press that tab down, that'll separate the two halves from the drawer half to the cabinet half. I'm also gonna take a 1 16th inch drill bit and set it to the exact depth of my screws so that way I don't go too deep. To mount your drawer slide, you can go ahead and follow your instructions that came with yours. Um, they'll usually set a measurement of the bare minimum that you can have, but you can go above that. So in my case, I'm going to take some 3 quarter inch plywood spacers, lay them down and set the drawer slide on that. If you're going to have a half inch overlaid drawer front all the way around, go ahead and hold your scrap piece up flush with the front of the cabinet and slide your drawer slide up to that. In my case, I'm going to have an inset drawer front. So I'm going to flush up my scrap piece of wood with the side of my cabinet and then slide my drawer slide up to that and that's going to be where it's going to live. I can go ahead and pre-drill all of my holes and attach all my screws. Ah! 
with the other side installed and now we can go ahead and attach the drawer to the slides themselves. So to do that we're going to take a couple scraps of quarter inch plywood. Now those are going to act as shims to pick the drawer up off the floor. From there we're going to install the drawer and then pull it back out ever so slightly and use our fake piece of wood there to act as our drawer front and we're going to slide the drawer slide flush with the front of the drawer. Then we can go ahead and pre-drill and attach our front screw on each side. To attach our second set of screws, we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to pull it out just a little bit farther, exposing our next set of holes. Then we're going to pre-drill and attach our screw into that one. To get to the third set of holes, what we're going to have to do is completely take the drawer out. So disassembling the drawer slides themselves into its two halves to expose the third hole. Then we can go ahead and do a test fit. Now your first install is going to be pretty snug. It's going to take a couple tries of opening and closing to get it to close smoothly, but you'll get it. All right, everybody, now we got a conundrum on our hands. So our dilemma is how do you mount your next set of drawer slides to the side and have them basically installed at the exact same location that we have them on the bottom drawer on our top drawer. So as you can see, we're kind of floating in midair here. We don't have the floor anymore to set our spacer on in order to get our uh, drawer slide installed. So one option you could do is take those same three quarter inch spaces you had before, set them on the drawer and you can uh, install them that way. It would work, it's not ideal. You can take different combinations of spacers and put them in there and just make it work. It's a quick and dirty way to do it. If you want even spacing on all of them, however, though, it's actually pretty simple or quite a little bit of math. So what do you do? So if all your drawers are the same side, it makes it easy, same size. Uh, so you basically take your opening, divide that in two, and then make a mark. Now what you've effectively done is you've made this one box where your drawer is installed in, and this another box where your drawer is installed in. So they're equal size. Now what you can do is take the size of your box, so let's just say it's eight inches, then measure your drawer slide itself. In my case, I've got an inch and seven eighths. So that will give me six and an eighth of an inch. What you do then is cut a spacer at six and an eighth, and then you would take that spacer block, set it on top of your other drawer slide, and then wherever that spacer block ends up, you would rest your drawer slide on top of that spacer, and that will give you the exact same spacing going all the way up. So if you had a massive cabinet, you're going to install, say, like a chest of drawers, and you're going to uh, install eight drawers in there. That'll work for all of them, that one spacer block that you cut out. So as long as you effectively divide that box up into equal sections, subtract the width of your drawer slide, that will basically give you the bottom of one to the bottom of the other with your drawer slides installed. That same math will work if you're installing um, a whole bunch of drawers on something with say a face frame and you've got a face frame piece in between each drawer. So let's just say we were, this is gonna be a drawer, that'll be a drawer and there'll be another one up here. Exact same thing, you would take from the bottom of this to the bottom of the next one. In my case, it's nine inches. So from here to here, that is the bottom of one opening to the bottom of the other. Subtract the width of your drawer slide, cut a spacer block, and you can set it in here and then this drawer slide to that drawer slide will be exactly the same going all the way up. Now in my case I've got a bit of a unique situation going on because I'm making two different size drawers in an opening with no face frame. So I've got no reference points, nothing to divide this. I have to do this in midair. If I was doing two different drawers with, with a face frame I'd obviously have a reference mark for the bottom of one drawer but I don't have that luxury so what do I do? So like I said before I left or I allotted for an inch below and an inch above my, each drawer. Now, like I said before, I made a nine inch drawer for this one here on the bottom. So that gives me nine, 10, 11. I've also allotted for an inch below my top drawer. So that gives me 12 inches. So what I'm gonna do is take, measure up 12 inches from the bottom of where my cabinet is and that 12 inch mark will be the bottom of where my drawer slide's gonna be. And that will pretty much put me almost bang on in the ballpark of where my next drawer slide has to go. So all I gotta do is measure from here to here, figure out my spacer and go from there.
Now to make sure the drawer side of our drawer slides are in the exact same place as well, we just have to transfer this measurement onto our other drawer. So I'm gonna take the very center, so basically right where the screw is, and I'm gonna to measure to the bottom of the drawer. In my case, it's one and one eighth. Now I'm gonna transfer that measurement to this drawer, one and one eighth. That mark is my center. Now I'm gonna take my square, rest it along there, and now I'm gonna extend that line. Now that mark is the center of where my drawer slide has to go. So I'll just snug this up to the front, make sure I'm centered front to back, and install my screws. To determine your drawer front sizing is really easy. So take the entire width measurement that you have and subtract one quarter inch. That will give you an eighth inch on each side. Then for your vertical measurement, go ahead and figure out how many gaps you have of one eighth inch. So in my case, I've got three. That gives me three eighths of an inch. So if I take my entire height, take three eighths of an inch off of that, I can figure out my heights from there. Now this will obviously work for either a solid stock drawer front that you cut down from maybe a one by 12 or if you got fabricated drawer fronts like I have here. Now to figure out where your hardware is gonna go, I like to cover the front of the drawer with masking tape just so I can uh, draw on it with a pencil and I won't blow out the plywood when I go and drill through it. Figure out dead center going both directions, so width and length, and then I like to connect, connect them with a line. From there, I'm gonna figure out the width from the center of both of the holes on my hardware itself. So in my case, I've got five inches. Now I can measure from dead center in the drawer back two and a half inches one way, two and a half inches the other, and that gives me the exact holes I need to mount my hardware. With the drawer front slid back in place, now we can work on attaching it to the drawer itself. So I'm going to take and slide it all the way to one side and I'm going to use some playing cards. Figure out the maximum amount that you can get into that one side. Then I'm going to go ahead, take that pile and split it into two and put half on the left, half on the right. And that'll give me equal spacing on each side. Now because I'm having an eighth inch all the way around, I can take the exact same amount of cards, in my case it's 12, and I can put 12 more on each side on the bottom and that spaces it up the exact same 1 8 inch. Finish drilling your holes all the way through and then I can attach my drawer hardware and that'll hold my front in place while I screw it on from the inside. Another method that I like to do, and this is arguably my favorite method, is with the holes drilled for your hardware, go ahead and take some three quarter inch screws. We're gonna space the drawer front in its exact place where it's gonna live with our card trick again. And we're gonna attach the drawer front to the drawer itself using some three quarter inch screws. From there, we can actually open the drawer with the drawer front in place and we can attach it from the inside with some inch and a quarter pan head screws. With the drawer front assembled and attached, all we have left to do is pull our front three quarter inch screws out, finish drilling your hole and attach your hardware. And it is simple as that, you guys. So I hope you guys found something in this video useful or helpful. If you made it this far, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys know anybody that might find this video useful, share it around, that'd be awesome. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.